Want to find out what's going on in your community? El Observador is San Jose's bilingual weekly newspaper. Go to your local newsstand and pick up your free copy today. Looking for the skills and training you need to get a new career? Call CTC, the Center for Training and Careers, and start working towards that new career today. Call CTC in San Jose. Nope, that's not a mistake. You're looking at my beautiful boots there I'm modeling. <laughs> it's I got them on Facebook from a lady from South Dakota. She hand painted them. Her site is called Res Hooves. She has purses and moccasins and clothes and nice boots. So the boots are beautiful. So I had to show them off. <laughs> so anyhow, welcome to the show. I'm Siwa Feely Rose Amador and this is Native Voice TV. Today we have us with us some guests, and I have a co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I just surprised her with that knowledge. This is Jordan Sky Paul. She works at the Native Health Organization in San Francisco, and she's here to help me with the show. She's going to help <laughs> interview our guests, which are her co-workers. Welcome, Jordan. Thank you. It's good to see you again. Thanks and introduce your co-workers to me. Oh, sure. Um, this is my coworker, Virgil Moorhead, um, and Kateri Chu. We work together in the community wellness department, uh, of, is a component of the Native American Health Center in Oakland. In Oakland. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the center. Um, our location is located at 3124 International Boulevard in Oakland. Um, that's our original site where um, we offer behavioral health services, which is the department that we're in, um, which is what we call community um, wellness department, um, which encompasses that in addition to our community events um, and community services, youth services, um, and our WIC program are all encompassed within that department. Um, and that particular site, we have um, various um, groups that meet weekly. Uh, Virgil and Kateri both have groups that they host. Um, we have community events. We have our youth services department, um, behavioral health services. Okay, and I want to correct that. I said San Francisco when I <laughs> opened up the show, and I did mean Oakland. <laughs> so the health center is located in Oakland, but you have different sites then, right? Right. We have six physical sites, um, of which two we have in San Francisco, two in Oakland, one in Alameda, and one in Richmond. So we're kind of spread out. Great. And I had just attended a, uh, an event that was uh, benefiting the health center that was Slaughter by the Water, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which was very interesting, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, and that was to benefit the youth programs, or how was that? Yeah, we, um, Nicholas Gomez had, is a community member who had invited us to his event that he um, was the creator of Slaughter by the Water, which is a metal festival. Um, and we took that as an opportunity to get involved. Um, and connect our Native Youth Wellness Program, which is what Kateri is going to um, speak of today, um, which is our suicide prevention program at the health center. Um, so we went on behalf of that program um, to premiere the video that our youth fellows put together over the summer, which was great. They showed it in the middle of the concert, which was awesome. I think there were about 1,500 people in attendance then, so it was a good chance for a lot of people to see a really good um, film. Oh, great. So it was premiered there. Let's take a look at that right now. And then, Kateri, you can tell us how it was put together and how the students were involved in making that, okay?
Wow. He has some very talented students there. Yeah. Tell us about how it was put together and what the reason for making the movie. Okay, yeah. So basically with the um, Native Youth Wellness Initiative, there's a media campaign that the goal is to try to reach 500 Native youth across California with a message. And so the Youth Fellows, that's a summer program where um, 12 youth um, from our youth services program got together and they had the support of the media team who taught them how to use the equipment and they came together and put this vision of what they wanted to do in terms of giving a message of love to youth and um, they you know from the beginning you know they talked about it thought of different angles and created a a script and then they filmed it and then they um, they edited it and just were involved in all the processes of the production and so we've been showing it we took it up to the um, Yurok Tribe Salmon Festival and let the youth watch it up there and um, we have a lot of hopes for, for bringing it to other um, places too. I bet they're real proud of it as they should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now can you talk a little bit about suicide in the Native youth community? Sure. Um, so basically, I guess the because the grant is focused on suicide prevention, um, we wanted to look at it in a way of how we wanted to support our youth, you know, and to find ways and that they feel that they can maintain their health and be healthy. And so um, instead of, you know, like going into, um, you know, what suicides have occurred or what, you know, how that impacts, we've looked more at what in this you know time right now what they need from us you know from the community to feel held and so that's kind of the angle we're taking we're looking at it for building relationships strengthening the relationships that they have um, strengthening cultural identity you know exploring what that means in an urban setting you know and and ways that um, we can look at strengthening that identity and also ways to create hope so oh, that's um, wonderful. yeah now, was this done during the summer or during the school year? The the media project was created over the summertime. Oh, okay. and they had a short little window and they put mm -hmm. it together. Wow. And, um, yeah, and right now we have other projects that we're doing. Um, we're working on creating an internship project um, and, and gathering youth that they can, you know, be stipend and be working towards some of the projects mm -hmm. that we want to create. And so, um, one of the goals that Virgil and I have kind of thought of is inspiring and, and trying to get the youth to think critically, you know, and, and kind of tying in political issues, social issues, and um, historical issues, and letting them dialogue with each other, letting them kind of create that space where they can really um, figure out, you know, what they believe and what they want to fight for, what, what it means to be alive, what can, like, inspire them to live. What was the age range of the youth that worked on the the uh, video? Um, I believe it was mostly teens, so I would say um, I think around 14 to maybe like uh, 17, okay. around that age. So spend. junior high and high mm -hmm, school mm -hmm, age. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, remarkable yeah. job. Yeah. Um, Virgil, you're working on an exchange, cultural exchange project. What is that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's similar to uh, the video in the sense of uh, we're trying to promote uh, cultural identity and really bring together our youth. So, so we had the idea of uh, making a connection between the rural reservation uh, natives up in uh, Yurok country, which is in Humboldt County, about five hours north of uh, San Francisco on the coast, which is my tribe, I'm part Yurok. And so connecting the, the urban Bay Area natives with the rural Yurok natives and having a cultural exchange and putting together some uh, curriculum that uh, really raises their consciousness level and, and like what Kateri was saying was being able to, to think critically about the historical uh, process of colonization and historical trauma that have been passed on from one generation to another and then also just promoting a sense of pride with being Native American and coming together in together as Native people and so we have some uh, traditional uh, leaders up in Yurok country to speak to uh, our youth. When we go up there, it's gonna be October 5th through the 7th, a weekend uh, kind of getaway for our youth. And, and, uh, and then we're gonna have some cultural activities. We're gonna do a, a salmon dinner. 
we're going to do a, a demonstration of the brush dance, which is our traditional uh, dance for the Yurok's. We're going to do a, a demonstration of the Pomo uh, bear dance as well. And then also just having some leaders, like I said, talk to the youth about education, about uh, their future, and, and really trying to break that cycle that uh, sometimes affects our community. And so then they will also come down to the Bay Area. So the Yurok uh, tribal youth are going to come down, and we're going to show them about the Bay Area too. So possibly taking them to Alcatraz, having some of our native leaders speak to them, and uh, doing you know talking circles, maybe a sweat down here as well. Wow, that's a really creative concept to do that, to have that exchange. And so you have youth uh, from over there that are involved. Yeah, oh, from our great. community, and then we're working with the Yurok tribe uh -huh. uh, to, uh, to put together the curriculum and uh, really make it a powerful experience and transform. So that'll be a weekend? There yeah, a weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, and then when they great. come down, another weekend, and then possibly in the summer, a whole week of uh, just cultural activities and coming together and sharing uh, our beautiful culture. Great. Now, the, the youth that you're working with, are they from like different high schools? Or are they all from, from the Bay Area? Yeah, so that's where we're still uh, working to select the youth, but we're looking at, you know, the assessment uh, process is really uh, important because, you know, we, some of the stuff we may be talking about can, and, and bring up some issues for some of our youth. So uh, we're, we're looking at which youth we think will benefit the most from our program. But yes, it'll be specifically a couple from San Francisco, because we have a, a, a satellite agency in San Francisco, like four or five from Oakland, and then po possibly one or two youth from Richmond. So it'll be all from the Bay Area, about 10 youth that'll go up there. And then the Yurok has about 10 or 11, uh, the tribe. Oh, how fascinating. So do you have different types of programs for the youth? Because obviously only a certain number can go to this event, but there, are there other activities that youth can be involved in yeah, so with like, your program? So like Kateri and I are uh, therapists, so we're both psychologists. Like uh, I got one more year of my doctorate, and then Kateri just finished school. So we can provide uh, therapy to our youth, psychotherapy. We also are... Uh, you know, we have like a young men's group in the youth center where uh, high school age native youth come and just do like they did a hike last week. Uh, and then we have uh, like internship programs and then we had like a youth fellowship this summer and they had like a event called the uh, Gathering of the Native Americans where they all went to Sausalito, like 50 youth from uh, mostly Northern California and, and did similar to the culture exchange in the sense of celebrating native culture and coming together as native people. Those are a couple of the programs, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, the, and also we have um, ideas in terms of like trying to outreach to the um, Bay Area community to kind of get um, in touch with some of the youth that might not be um, involved or engaged in the programs that we have. So we're working right now with a few youth to develop um, a, um, Kind of like a presentation to bring into the schools and you know like so some schools where there's youth who might not you know um, um, have a lot of connection in terms of their culture to kind of uh, be a way to bring that visibility out and um, so we're thinking about you know going into the school showing the video and then sharing the card that they also made they made a little card that you can pass out and um, on there there's a tumblr site and so the idea behind it is that they'll be able to connect you know like with you know um, technology advancing there's a lot of different things that the youth connect with each other already and so having this site where they can you know look at the video kind of see what other comments you know share stories share you know concerns or be a way to support each other so those are some of the ways that we're trying to outreach to we also are working with the um, medical department and the school-based health clinics we're trying to develop a way to um, bring this issue bring um, youth wellness as a, a really um, a concern you know and bringing their level of awareness of suicide risk um, heighten that awareness and so we're doing um, um, 
we're trying to get um, like just more sensitivity to how to how mm -hmm. these providers care for the uh, the people that they're working with. So oh, okay. Like now I've heard you know about the high number of suicides on the reservations. So as psychologists, are you experiencing the same thing with the urban youth, or similar? Or I would, you know, I would say that um, it's a concern, you know, like I see it in, um, in my work in the community and, and... And you know the one thing about the recent research and with the high rates of uh, suicide in Indian country is that the, the, the studies are showing that, so, so for example, there was a study up in Alaska that there, some of the rates were like 400 times higher than the, the normal population mm -hmm. or the uh, dominant population or whatever you want to call it. But, uh, what they found in the study, that the suicides, the, the communities that had the highest rates of suicide were the ones where their culture was disrupted the most. And so the, the, the communities that, that didn't have just normal rates of suicide had, were practicing their culture, were practicing their traditions, were in touch, you know, being uh, self-sufficient. And so I think that that's kind of what we're focusing on, that we're not so much focusing on the statistics mm -hmm. or how high they are, which is more of you know, negative energy. We're looking at what's right and bringing back our traditions and bringing back our culture. And with that, the suicide will dissipate, we feel. Mm -hmm. And you probably see more of a sense of pride, the whole, um, I guess, more of a positive attitude amongst the youth when, once they can identify with their culture. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, as far as education goes, what er, what areas do you touch on as, you know, with your programs to further education, to get kids into college, and so forth? Well, I think some of the um, the ideas in terms of just bringing the history more to the forefront. I know that um, we had uh, recently done a history class at the Intertribal Friendship House and, and you know the community came together and, would, and it was done through film and so Virgil and I are kind of working on putting together a similar thing for um, the youth that engages them through that type of media you know through hip-hop culture through all different ways to reach them that will let them be able to um, you know, receive the education of like the politics, understand, you know, the historical context and and kind of looking at some of the social, the social changes that, that they want to um, make and put their energy towards. So really oh, like good. doing yeah. that. And, and a real strong focus on engaging and making them feel safe and comfortable to mm -hmm. come and participate in our programs. Because if we don't have engagement, if they don't feel comfortable coming to the center or to, uh, with our activities, not going to come. So there's, there are no programs. Exactly. And so we have to find what interests them mm -hmm. so they will come. So like part of the cultural exchange, the first part we're focused on is just having fun mm -hmm. and making them feel comfortable and, and not realizing that we're teaching them in the process. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's kind of one of our major aims is just to to get them there and come together. You know, as community, community heals, that's, our culture heals. That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. Now, Jordan, as far as the concert and the the benefit, did it, uh, was that a uh, a new exposure for the health center, and how were people receptive to it? Mm -hmm. It was definitely a first for us. Uh, we, you know, I think I've been saying over and over that I think it's so important that we participate with our larger community as well. I mean, in addition to our native community that we are here in the Bay Area, but um, so those kinds of opportunities I think are are really golden ones because we have a chance to represent ourselves in our larger community, to be visible, um, mm -hmm. to sort of represent our culture from a strength-based um, approach, um, and so I think people were. In general, I think people were excited to see us there. We had a pretty large presence. You know, we were right at the front of the um, vendor area at the Slaughter by the Water. Um, people stopped by. They checked out our flyers. You know, we, we had conversations with them about coming to the health center, visiting our website. Um, people purchased the water bottles that we sold, which we had sold there that day for our scholarship program, um, which did well, and we're continuing to sell those. So okay. it um, it was a good experience, I think, you know, in our our youth, I think, were proud to be there and represent the project that they had worked on. They got a chance to get up on stage and briefly mention what they'd worked on and, 
you know, they were nervous and excited all at the same time. It was all good and new. And um, I think people in general are really welcoming and really um, appreciative to have the Native community present whenever we are. We always seem to get really positive feedback, and I think people are people are open. Oh, that was different exposure. Mm -hmm. Now you said you're still selling your water bottles. Where can people purchase those? Um, we're working on getting it online, but for now, temporarily, people could call directly to me um, at the Native American Health Center is um, area code 510-434-5487 is my direct line, and um, we can coordinate working on that, but we're in the process of finalizing that I would right have now. to do that. <laughs> because I, I was on the, that ship for a while and I came back and, oh, no, it's too late, they're gone. I know. <laughs> it got windy at the end, so Those we kind really of packed nice up. Water, water bottles that have... Um what would you say? What kind of design? Yeah, we had a fancy dancer with a guitar on one side, on the nice. other side. With so the... if you want a nice water bottle, contact Jordan at, yeah. what was that number again? 510-434-5487. <laughs> All right, because I want to get one too. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the plans for the future with your organization? We've got a lot going on right now. Um, I think probably in in my realm right now is our Native Vote campaign. We're working oh, together good. with Native Vote and NCAI um, campaign to try and get as many Native um, community members registered to vote as possible. Thank you all for being here. You're doing wonderful work in the community and we have to make sure everybody registers. We want you to vote. We need our voices heard. So let's rock the Native Vote, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Good night. Thanks for joining us.